Welcome to Farming Simulator. Would you like to start a short? No, that's what I'm doing. I am making the short guided tour that will show you the basics of the game. What is going on fellow farmers and friends and welcome back to a Farming Simulator 22 video yet again here on the channel today we're going to be talking about some things that I wish I'd have known when I first started playing Farming Simulator 22. Now with that let me preface this by saying I am by no means the be all know all of Farming Simulator. There are I mean there's a competitive side to Farming Sim 22 which I didn't even know about when I first started playing but apparently it, it is it's a thing like it, it it exists and i'm not knocking it i mean that's great like i i'm just upset because i can't stack bales as, as good as everyone else can but anyways that's neither here nor there that's not the point of the video the point of the video is i want to share with you guys five things that i wish i'd have known when i first started playing farming simulator 22 because i am doing i had to do the same thing that you are doing right now i had to watch a beginner's guide to farming simulator 22 and some of the things that I, I learned in these beginner guides, I'm like, I would have probably never, I'd have never picked up on this had I not watched a video or two or three or 576 on how to play. There is for, for this game, and I don't want to say as simplistic as it is, because it's in some aspects, the game's not that simplistic. Uh, it, it, it kind of builds on itself. Uh, in some of the things that you can do. We're going to talk about a little bit that about that later with uh, managing your fields and, and production plants and stuff like that, or production points, I guess I should say, uh, and how they kind of like stack and do all these different types of things. And oh yeah, I mean, we're going to get, we're going to get into it. Like we're going to talk about quite a bit of stuff, but I feel like the things that we're going to talk about are going to help you get started in the game and help you enjoy the game. First and foremost, it's this isn't necessarily a part of the five things I wish I knew when I first started playing farming sim but these are of importance to you when you're trying to decide where to start with your farming sim experience currently right now we are on Elm Creek we are in one of the settings when you select a new game and it asks you if you want to it's basically like difficulty settings is how I'm going to explain it right so we have three options and those three options are new farmer, farm manager, and start from scratch. And you can see it, easy, medium, hard. And let's talk about the biggest differences between these three career mode settings right here that you're gonna, you're gonna face it. As soon as you start a new game, you're gonna see as soon as you select the empty slot, it is gonna ask you what difficulty you wanna play on. Easy farmer, let's read it up. You already own some land and equipment. The economy is profitable and gameplay elements are on an easy setting. All of which is very true. The economy, you're gonna make the most amount of money for all of your products that you uh, harvest off your fields, that you have made, like the, that your animals produce for you. You're gonna to make top dollar on all of that stuff. Plus the best thing about New Farmer is you start with already owning equipment and you own some land. So there we go, that is New Farmer. That is the best place I highly recommend if you're brand new to the game that you start on New Farmer because it doesn't really get any easier from there. Farm Manager, standard, setter, standard setting for getting started. You don't own any land, but you have some substantial funds ready for spending. The economy is stable, grain prices are decent, and gameplay elements are on the standard settings. Now settings are all gonna all, are all gonna be different for not only the difficulty settings but for the players themselves, right? Everyone has their preference for what they play uh, with with settings wise, things that they turn on, things that they turn off, things that they care about having as part of their gameplay experience, things that they can do without on their gameplay experience. You name it, you can change it in the settings. Substantial funds. Let's talk about that in Farm Manager. $1.5 million is going to be your starting bank account balance in Farm Manager. And I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of money. It's not. It's not. Not in Farming Sim. $1.5 million is not that much money in Farming Sim. It is a lot of money if you already have a well-established farm and you already have all of the best equipment that you could possibly have to manage your farm, to do all of your field work, and you own some production points. And yeah, if money at that point is not a factor. Your farm is making the money for you. 
You're not needing to really spend too much money. You're just really spending it on upkeep for your farm. And at that point, you're making more than you're spending. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you, $1.5 million does not go very far at all in this game. But before I scare you guys any more about Farm Manager, it is a very fun mode to play on. You have to weigh out the decisions that you're going to make. Do you heavily invest your money into large fields and then not have much money to invest into the equipment to support working those large fields? Do you invest all of your money into the top of the line equipment and then not have any money left over for any land? Or do you find a happy medium, you buy some standard size fields, some like middle to road size fields that aren't gonna be too bad to manage, but aren't gonna be uh, too quick or not make you any money initially? Ideally, you kind of want to split it because you want equipment that's going to support you on the farm, meaning that it can function with a lot of the different peripherals that you're going to have to have, like plows, cultivators, seeders, planters, so on and so forth. But yet it is durable enough, big enough, and has the capacity to handle some of these medium-sized farms that you may end up buying. Farm manager, $1.5 million. You own no equipment, no nothing but you have substantial funds to get started. It's up to you how you spend those funds. Then we get into the Mac Daddy. We get into the start from scratch. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You start with uh, nearly, nearly, I'll say, nearly nothing. Uh, a real challenge. The economy is tough. Prices are low, and you've already taken out a hefty credit with the bank. Gameplay elements are on the most realistic setting. It is so realistic that you actually have to start your engine when you get into your tractors. Um, it, 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 start from scratch is very fun. For being the hardest setting, it is very fun because start from scratch makes you think about the next three moves that you're going to make, not the current move that you're making. That's what I really love about start from scratch. You start with $500,000, of which you owe the bank $200,000. So you have a couple options right off the rip. You can just pay back to 200000 and not worry about any loan interest or nothing like that. But then you only have $300,000 to spend on farmland, which is uh, sometimes pretty, pretty expensive, and you still have to buy equipment. Yeah, it's a, it's a true, true test. Or you could just keep the $500,000, invest it in land, invest it in equipment, get started, make some money, and then every so often just throw some money at your $200,000 uh, debt that you have with the bank and take care of it that way. The options are endless, which really brings me into a point that I'm going to reiterate later on in the video. The way you play this game is never wrong. It's never wrong. If you just want to get on this game and zip around in some tractors, haul some trailers, harvest some fields, plow some dirt, you can do that. But if you also want to have a role play series with a backstory, you can do that. Like, I think that's what I love the most about this game is just the, the latitude that you have to play it in so many different ways. It's awesome. Absolutely love it. But for right now, let's jump back over to Elm Creek and continue on with our five things I wish I knew when I first started playing Farming Simulator 22. All right, so as we get started, probably one of the things that you're going to want to take a look at first is what when you start with a new farmer on the all of the base game maps that are included. And then eventually I'm going to also do a video about getting into mods and downloading those and getting those installed for both console and for PC. Pretty much every map out there has a base starting location for a new farmer where you're going to own X amount of equipment. You're going to own X amount of fields. And you're going to be pretty well off when you get started. So to check what we currently have for vehicles, we just need to go over here into our garage for our owned items and see what we currently have. This is everything that we currently own right now. So we have a medium tractor. We have a harvester. We actually have three medium tractors. And I'm going to, I'm going to get back to this here in just a moment. We have our truck, we have a trailer, we have a header for the harvester, we have a cultivator that prepares the field for its next seeding. We'll talk about that a little bit more. We have a seeder, a header trailer for hauling our header, obviously, and then we have a weight, two weights that attach to the front of our tractors. Now, a couple decisions that you can make right away. I did not mean to teleport into our harvester 
couple decisions that you can make right away. So currently, right now, if we take a look at our map, we are right down in this area here. And if you see a number that is highlighted in blue, we currently own those plots of farmland. So we own fields 44, 45, and 46. All the vehicles here are what belong to us. And what we could also do is if we could not find a vehicle, we could go back to our garage. We could highlight the vehicle. And I have an Xbox controller here on PC. I could hit Y to show on map. And then I can go back to the map. And now that piece of equipment is blinking at me to let me know, hey, I'm over here. But I look at this, right? And I say, okay, I have three fields. I have a combine harvester. I have wheat planted in this field. I have wheat planted in this field. And it looks like I don't have anything planted in this field. And you can definitely tell that they stage the tractors for someone who is brand new to the game because this tractor over here is already set up. I think this actually has a plow attached to it. If I'm not mistaken, let's go back here and check this one out. Yep, that, oh, it's got the cultivator. So this was a wheat field. This had been recently harvested. Uh, this field over here is ready to be harvested. And that field back there, as you can see, it's just a brown patch of dirt. That one needs to be seeded. And that tractor back there in the distance will have a seeder on it. I don't need three tractors. I need one tractor. So what I would recommend doing, if you're just starting out and you're looking to get some extra money to build an extra little bit of cushion... I would find the tractor that has the most amount of horsepower and I would keep that tractor and I would sell these other two. Right away, you're going to make an additional $156,000 just by selling that stuff off. Just a suggestion, don't have to do it. The weight, I would do the same thing. I would sell either both of them or I'd sell one of them, doesn't really matter. Uh, the odds of you using the weight, I mean, it's up to you. You can use them. I don't always use weights, but... Hey, we're, we're trying to make money. We're trying to make money in the early game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me into the first point. How do we make money on Farming Simulator? And I, I'm going to tell you right now, it sounds like a ridiculous question. It sounds like, well, you just harvest this field and you sell all this stuff off. Yeah, I know. I, I really wish it was uh, that easy. And in some aspects, yes, it is that easy. All right. So besides doing contracts... So every map has contracts that you can go out and you can complete these contracts and make the amount of money that they display there on the screen. You can, if you own all of this equipment or similar pieces of equipment that would allow you to go out and mow, bale, and haul the bales for this field, you can just accept the contract and you won't have to borrow any of the items. Or you can borrow all of these items and your reward amount that you're going to make for completing the contract on field 13 will be reduced by $42. Now, the economy has an effect on this. $42 is a very, very, very small price to pay for all of this equipment. For an example, this is the baler that they want us to use for that contract. If we were to just lease this one piece of equipment, it's $2,932 just for that one piece of equipment. So borrowing items for contracts is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, now, that price of the reduction for the reward will be affected by the economy mode. If you were in farming manager or farm manager with the normal economy, this might be upwards of $1,500 of a reduction. I, that's probably still a little high, maybe 750. If you were on start from scratch with hard economy, I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer to $2,000 for a reduction in your reward. So it kind of plays off the economy setting. Contracts are absolutely a great way to make some additional money when starting off in the early game. But I'll say this. they Sometimes you have to do a lot of contracts to be able to afford other things. So how can we make enough money to afford new equipment, new farmland, animals, once we get into animals, fertilizer, herbicide, all the stuff we need to manage our fields? Yeah, sure, we can take another loan out, right? We can go hit the bank. We can borrow $5,000, we can pay the $5,000 back, we can borrow $50,000, then we can pay the $50,000 back over time. 
But if we aren't making any money, how do we pay the loan back? And then every month you're going to get hit with interest on this loan. And if you don't have the funds saved up, well, then we're going to go into further debt because we don't have the money to pay the loan back. So learning the ins and outs of production points and sell points is absolutely critical. Learning how to manage your yield from your field. So right now, we only have a 38% yield bonus on this field. So how do we get this to be a higher yield percentage? Well, if you look, we're at 0% fertilization. So we need to fertilize this field. But do we fertilize it once or do we fertilize it twice? Well, let's find out what we need to do. In Farming Simulator, they do you a great favor by giving you these filters on the right side of the screen. So if you're unsure of what a crop is, you can go ahead and let's just uh, let's turn off canola. So all the fields that were currently canola will no longer show up on the map. If I want to see what fields are canola, I can turn them back on. Same thing with oat, same thing with corn, sunflowers, soybeans, potatoes, so on and so forth. So we know right now that we have two wheat fields. If I turn wheat off, it goes away. Turn it back on, it comes back. Uh, let's see here. We have crops here on this side. We have grass and oilseed radish, which I've never, never in my time messed with oilseed radishes, but I have... Uh, utilize grass because grass is at actually a critical component for late game stuff, especially when you're getting into animals. Growth. This page right here will be a lifesaver for you. Understanding these growth filters will help you manage your farm. I promise you. If you learn how to use these to your advantage, you'll have no problem making more money because we're going to understand how to actually manage our farm. So we have various shades of green all throughout the map. I'm going to address the green first because that is important for us to keep track of. That's our growth stage. Now, if you look over here on the right side and you look at growing, you'll see that there's multiple different stages. There's probably, I can't, my eyes aren't that good. I'm going to say there's at least seven or eight different stages of growth. The lighter green color means that you that that crop has just started growing. The darker green means that that crop is probably going to be ready for harvest in the next month or two. Once it reaches the end of its growth cycle, it turns into orange, ready to harvest. We are ready to harvest our wheat field. So the math adds up on that. All of these orange fields across the map are all ready for harvest. Now, when we look... We can see that field 45, which was previously a wheat field, has already been harvested. Anything highlighted in purple means that that field was harvested. Anything in light blue means that the field was cultivated, means that we can go and we, we can plant in that field if we so choose to do so. All sorts of different stuff. If we have a field that dies out, it's going to show up as withered. Um, if we plow a field, you'll see it'll show up as a purplish, or I'm sorry, a darker purplish color. I don't think we have any on the map. Oh, we have one up here. Field one actually has been plowed, cultivated. Again, we've already talked about seed bed, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Once you plant a field or seed a field, it will turn to its respective color to represent that crop type on the map. So we have a cotton field down here. We have the canola fields. We have oat fields. We have corn fields. We got them all. So definitely keep track in here, especially with this page of where your fields are at that you own and how close you are to get into the harvest season. However, got to manage your crops. You got to make sure you're doing your fertilization. How do we know how much fertilization we need to do? They give us that as well. So if we look over here, we see fertilized. All right, you see a lighter blue, and then you see a darker blue. That means that the fields take two stages of fertilization to be considered 100% fertilized. In order to get the best yield possible, you're going to want to make sure that all of your fields that you own and are planning to harvest get to the second stage. For an example, field 49 has two stages of fertilization. Field 47 only has one. Let's go take a look at these fields and see if we can see the differences in the yield percentages. All right, taking a look here at field 49. It's got some sorghum in there. It is still currently growing. Now, it is 
down there at the bottom right corner field info significantly important this is going to give you a lot of field feedback about the current state of your fields so right now you can see that we're 100 percent fertilized it is calling for some herbicide because there are active weeds growing and we can see that's in the blue text and our yield bonus is up to 98 percent for this field it means that we are going to pull as close to the maximum amount of yield off this field as we possibly can that's the importance of making sure that we're taking care of our fields the other field that we're going to take a look at these are what weeds look like by the way when they're in their like late stages of growth they call them large weeds yeah herbicide will help take care of these however herbicide does hurt your yields so you want to be careful with that if you can you want to use a mechanical weeder before you start using herbicide i'll show you what the mechanical weeders look like here in just a moment now we look at field 47 it's got one stage of fertilization on it 50 percent fertilized yield bonus 75 percent if this potato field was fully grown and ready for harvest we'd get a 75 percent yield off of there we're leaving 25 percent of our yield on the table based off one stage of fertilization you're leaving money on the table is what that means now just as important as managing your field is making sure that you have storage for your products that you pull from your fields there would be your grain silo so whatever you pull off of these fields you want to store in here this will be your tip point right here to store your wheat your canola your sunflower your whatever you have harvested off a field you can store it in here i'm pretty sure you can even store loose grass and loose hay in here as well I recommend building up a stash of product or stash of yield from your fields first before just ultimately going and selling everything off, especially if you're in a new farmer setting and you're already starting with money and you're not really feeling the pinch yet because you already own equipment, you already own a couple fields. Now is not the time to run right out and start selling your items off. But if you are going to sell, there's a couple things that you need to pay attention to. And that is going to be your price fluctuations. So every map has built-in places where you can sell your product. Obviously, it's going to give you a buying price, which means that Feed and Grain South right now is currently buying wheat at $831 for every 1,000 liters. So basically, if we had 5,000 liters of wheat, you would basically just do 831 times 5. And that would give you approximately the amount of money that you're going to make off of selling 5,000 liters of wheat to feed and grain south. Goldcrest Valley, however, is selling or is buying for 927. The grain mill is buying for 842 currently, but the prices are going down. Johnson's Farmers Market's also buying at 850, but the price is going down. If you want to know the best time to sell a product, you want to do show price fluctuations. This will tell you that in January, it is the best month to sell wheat because currently we're in August. So we're down here. The average price works out to be 820-ish maybe based off what we currently have. I would say that that's almost accurate. These are probably going to dip down closer to 820. But at the high side, we can make $400 more. $400 more if we just wait one, two, three, four, five months. And by this point, if we've already been through a couple harvests for wheat and we have stashed up, say, 30,000 liters of wheat, and we go and we sell at 1221 per 1000 liters well 30 times 1221 you're going to be looking at pretty close to $32,000 right there that's in the early game that's that's a fair amount of money to be making an absolute fair amount of money to be making and this will do the same thing for all of your crops you can go through and if you're trying to get an idea of what to actually plant like if I'm in this decision point of whether I want to plant wheat or I want to plant oat, I can come in here and look at the prices. I can go to show price fluctuations, 1929 in the same month as wheat. The low point is in the same month as wheat, but I make $400 more for oat. So I'm probably going to plant oat. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, man, 
Well, when do I plant oat then? I'm so glad you asked. Let's talk about that because we have a crop calendar. And this is going to be something that you're going to want to become familiar with as well because this is going to give you your planting seasons and your harvest season. So if we take a look at oat, we can plant it in March or April, and then we can turn right around, literally turn right around and harvest it in July or August. Now, if you plant in March, you can harvest in July. If you plant in April, you can harvest in August. I believe if you plant in March, you can harvest in either July or August, but the moment you hit September, it's going to be withered. Now, what you can do is you can get creative, and this is where you're going to want to start to kind of think two steps ahead. Maybe I want to plant oat, and I want to plant, or uh, I want to plant wheat, because I can harvest oat and wheat in the same month. So now I have two different crops that I'm harvesting. I have two different options to sell off if I need. Maybe I need the wheat for my chickens, and I need the oat to help me just make some extra money coming out of the winter time. Absolutely a fair option. So get familiar with your crop calendar because it is very vital to know when you can plant certain items. Get familiar with your prices page. Make sure that you're not only looking just uh, not only looking at the current prices for everything, but that you're also looking at when is the best time to sell something. Because if you don't check the price fluctuations, I mean, you're gonna look at this and be like, "Wow, fourteen seventy six at Goldcrest Valley, done, sold." But we left $500 on the table per thousand liters. It adds up pretty quick, especially when you're just trying to make some money in the early game. There are many other ways to make some money. You can work with animals, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly talk about them in this video. But I'd like to do another video down the line where we actually get in depth about having cows, chickens, sheep, pigs, all sorts of stuff. Because animals can make you money but animals are very expensive to get started with. Very, very expensive to get started with. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And seeing how we've already really been talking about managing our fields and utilizing that to help us make some money. Again, the whole purpose of this game, and when I first started playing, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand how to manage our fields. Cultivate the field, why? When I can just plow it and replant it. Why does the field need to be rolled after I seed it? That sounds very time consuming and boring. I got to fertilize how many times? Oh, and now there's active weeds growing and I need to de-weed my field. And how do I do this? Like, how do I do all of this stuff? When do I know how to, or like, when do I know that I need to do it? All these things just kind of kept building up for me. And it just, I just didn't know. I didn't have any like, I just no true direction on what to do. And I, I look back on it now and I'm like, man, I, I guess I should have just kind of put two and two together. But before the sky continues to fall, yes, managing your fields can be very time consuming, very tedious. And even at times it can be very expensive. When you're looking at getting into herbicide and just, I mean, look at the price of solid fertilizer, 1920, and that's just for a thousand liters. If your field needs more than a thousand liters, you can buy eight at a time, it's $13,000. 10% of our $100,000 current balance would go to buying fertilizer. Now, 8,000 liters is going to go a pretty long ways. I just want to throw that out there. But as you can see, like if you're just looking to buy four or 5,000 liters, it's still in the early game is pretty expensive. Seeding your field, expensive. Buying wheat for your chickens because you don't have any wheat to feed them, expensive. There's just a lot of different things that are expensive when you're first getting started. So with that, the better that you take care of your fields, the better they're going to treat you. The more money that they're going to bring in, which leads back into point number one is that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make money. We're trying to make money. So let's talk about some of the things that you're going to have to do with your fields. You can see here it says this field needs lime. Lime, we just seen it. Lime right here helps to balance out the pH levels of the soil. I'm not going to get into all of that. There is an aspect of this game that involves pH balances and nitrogen levels for fertilization. That's all in the precision farming, which is part of a mod that you can download for the game, which I'll talk about in a later video. And then I'll also do a separate video for precision farming. But just know that we need lime. We have to put lime on our fields. While it is relatively cheap per 2,000 liters, 
The fields will eat up lime. You will spread a lot of lime on larger fields, and you'll find yourself having to replenish that stock every so often in your spreaders when you're out there. If you get a message uh, down in your field info that says needs rolling, well, let's go take a look at rollers. And no, we are not talking about grass care with rollers like this. So don't don't uh, lease or buy the wrong style roller. They're talking about these bad boys right here. These big old things. All right, so rolling your field is definitely going to help with your yield percentage. It's probably going to yield you anywhere to 3% 3, 3 to 5% more on your fields. And it takes place after you have seeded. In real life, rolling your fields just helps create a more solid seed bed for those seeds to actually grab hold of and germinate and grow into the crops that they eventually become. So rolling your fields... Uh, I'm gonna, are you, are you going to go broke if you don't roll your fields? No, but if you want to get a few extra percentage on your yield from a field, I would suggest that you roll it. Also with your fields, you sometimes will get field stone. There are stone pickers that you can run over your fields with and they will pick up the stones and then you can also sell the stones and make a little bit of money. And when I say a little bit of money, I mean a little bit of money stones don't really go for that much money bottom line here folks it's all about the yield bonus percentage the higher your yield bonus percentage is the more money you're gonna make and again i'll reiterate that ties back into point number one because we're trying to make money and also we need to monitor our planting seasons our harvest seasons which we've talked about with the calendars up here We've talked about the stages of growth. We know that we can find those on our main map here. Crop types, growth stages, ready for harvest, plowed fields, cultivated fields, anything that needs foliage removed, whether our fields have died off and become withered. Fertilized weeds, it'll annotate weeds for you. Looking over here at field 40, guess what that's got in it? Stones, because if I turn the stones off, it doesn't show up. If I hit needs lime, any of these fields that show up with that color, they need lime. They need it. Lime, I do believe, gives you a slight percentage to your yield as well. I do want to say it might be a couple percentage more. What I should do is run a test right now in lime field 45, even though we haven't harvested it, and just see if it bumps up our percentages any. Uh, I might do that here towards the end of the video. But for now... We're going to roll in to talking about productions. And boy, oh boy, can productions get... It's like the song that never ends. Productions can be the song that never ends. Let me find a good one here. I think this is the grain oh, the sawmill. Let me find real quickly. This could take longer than what I thought it was going to take me. Damn it. Where is the grain mill? I bet you it's way up there. It's way up here. All right. So we have fast traveled to H&H &H Milling Group. Now let's say we harvest our wheat field. And let's just see what the grain mill is purchasing wheat for right now. 844 per 1,000 liters. So we could come up here to the grain mill and sell off our wheat and we can make money that way, which is absolutely fine. It's it's totally acceptable. It's, it's a good way to make money in the early game. Bring your products up here to a production point, sell it off to them, let them use it. You have the grain mill, you have the oil mill, you have cereal production, you have the dairy. Productions will guide us into thinking about we're thinking that we're making tons of money with all that yield that we just learned about on our fields, right? We're trying to get as much as we can. And while that's somewhat true, productions are really just a stepping stone to another feature that will bring in some dollar signs in a big way. But that's kind of getting ahead of where we currently are. Production plants are essential to the game. This is what gives us purpose for managing our fields with the hope of bringing, this, uh, bringing our products up to these types of production plants in selling them off now you can you can buy production points i'm going to give you a life hack at the end of this 
But uh, for now, we'll just kind of continue talking about just the general productions. Again, they're essential to the game. They allow us to take the wheat that we're going to harvest off of our field and turn it into flour. They allow us to harvest sunflowers and turn it into sunflower oil. But don't be too quick to sell off your product to productions. Keep in mind, there are some things like wheat, for example, that can be utilized for multiple purposes, such as feeding chickens. So if you get into managing animals along with your farm and you sell off all your wheat to the grain mill, you now cannot feed your chickens. Now you have to pay out of pocket for the wheat to feed your chickens. So you kind of want to think about what you're doing. The idea with production points is eventually we want to own it. As you've seen there, I went up to the ranch, I hit my left thumb stick, and it gives me the option to buy the grain mill for $96,000. So that way when we deposit wheat to create flour, we can then collect up the flour that is an output from the grain mill and sell it to the bakery so they can make bread while we sit back and literally make that bread. Ha! <laughs> Okay, so no one's going to be buying any of my jokes anytime soon, but I'm serious. Don't overdo it on selling off your products to production plants too quickly. And initially stay away from buying them. Remember, if you don't have the input, there is no output. So I would recommend that you initially start focusing on storing the products that you're pulling off your fields initially, rather than selling it all off. It's uh, at that point, it's kind of like just living harvest to harvest. It's like living paycheck to paycheck. It's just kind of scrounging to get by with no real savings, if, if you will. But what you can do is if you find yourself in a position of financial prosperity, we can bring, let's just say we bring up 10,000 liters of wheat to the grain mill. We deposit the 10,000 liters into the grain mill and we get paid for depositing our 10,000 liters here. What you want to do is quickly come over here and you want to purchase the production point. Why do you want to purchase it? Well, let's go look at what we would see upon doing so. That 10,000 liters of wheat that we just deposited to the grain mill prior to buying it, we got paid for. And then we turned around and we bought the grain mill and our 10,000 liters of wheat is going to be showing up here still as incoming materials. It's kind of a way to cheat the system on the game. We can deposit the product, get paid for the product, buy the production plant, and then utilize our product that we deposited to create an outgoing product. In this case, it would be flour. Now, grain mills are nice because they take wheat, barley, oat, and sorghum. Sorghum in wheat can be used to feed your chickens. I don't think barley can be used to feed chickens. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong on that. But that's just a way that you can make a little bit of extra money, buy the production plant, and then take flour. Now, the significance of this, if we look at wheat, we know that the grain mill is buying for eight forty-five, dollars but we buy the grain mill, we get into producing flour, Let's see what flour sells for. Holy good Lord, it sells for four. It's selling for, uh, let's just say on average, about $13.75 right now. Let's see what it sells for at its highest, over $2,000. Whereas wheat at its highest sells for $1,200. That's the importance of productions. They are vital to your success in the game, but you cannot rush into buying production plants in the early game got to make sure that you still have the products for the input in order to manage a steady flow for outputs that's the biggest thing with productions ah yes and then animals they're intimidating to start with but i assure you they're very profitable and very and also very expensive sometimes cows will cost you a lot of money to get started in for an example we have a, a basic cow pasture down here that holds 15 cows but that cow pasture alone is gonna cost us fifteen thousand dollars i'm sorry seventy five thousand dollars just to get started with this little fencing material right here in a couple feed troughs in a water trough cost us seventy five thousand dollars and ladies and gentlemen it does not get any cheaper from there 
Then you can go for the big ones here that have automatic feeders that you have to supply certain uh, products to. And if I can get a snapshot of it, uh, yeah, you can kind of see right above like the demolish button. It has a sign for hay, wheat, uh, or I'm sorry, straw and grass because we have to make TMR, which stands for total mixture rations. That's what the cows eat. And then not only that, once we have this in place, then we have to purchase the cows, which are also very expensive. They do reproduce, so that is nice. You could just start with maybe 15 cows and then just slowly let your cow population build over time. I mean, that's, that's absolutely an option. But once they're up and running, they're very profitable, especially for cows. They produce milk, they produce slurry and manure, which can all be sold, especially the milk. You're going to make a lot of money off milk. Uh, slurry and manure, though, can be reused around your farm on your fields. So you're kind of going to save yourself a little bit of money in like fertilization, as long as you can use the manure, uh, the slurry to create digestate. You can also put digestate on your fields. But my ultimate recommendation when you're looking to get into animals is I would start I would start small and build your way up. So chickens being one of those deals. Look at this, $6,000 to get started with some chickens. And chickens are actually relatively inexpensive. I think like mature chickens that are able to reproduce right away go for like maybe 50 bucks per chicken. So to start with 10 chickens at 50 bucks, you're looking at $500. And as long, and they do take barley, by the way. And then as long as you are keeping them fed, there's no water requirement, so it's pretty low threat. As long as you're keeping them fed, they're going to produce eggs. And what can we do with eggs? You guessed it. We can sell them. Look at the prices on eggs per thousand liters. That's not even the best part. Look at this. At its high point in New Farmer on Easy Economy, 42 hundred dollars per thousand liters it's it's insane it's a lot it's a lot of money when you're first getting started a lot of money for a minimal investment i i mean you're nearly making your money back on the chicken pen alone by just cashing in on 1000 liters of eggs in the month of november it's not a bad uh return on investment not a bad turn Sheep are another great option. Uh, they don't require much. Uh, they pretty much feed off grass. Again, it's not super cheap, but it's also not super expensive to get started. You can see here they take grass, they take hay, or and they take water. So you'd have to keep this full of water, which is fine because back over, I thought somewhere on this map, they actually had a water collection point. But their water collection points are cheap enough to put in. Or you can just back a watering trailer up to some sort of river or creek and you can fill it up that way for, for free, basically. And as long as you're keeping your sheep fed and keeping them watered, they're going to stay healthy and they're going to start to produce wool, which once again, ladies and gentlemen, I sound like a broken record. You can sell wool. I mean, $2,500 right now and at its high point, $3,600. Eggs are actually a better profit, better return on investment. But that's just kind of initially looking at getting into animals. Like I said before, I'd like to do a more in-depth series on uh, working with animals and getting started with those and what it takes for upkeep and then what to do with the products that they produce. For I accidentally clicked down to milk, but yeah, milk does pretty well. Uh, I mean, it doesn't do the greatest, but for the amount that gets produced, that's what you got to keep in mind. For the amount that gets produced... You got to eat for every thousand you have. It's basically 2,300 bucks. It's good. It's good money. It's good, good money. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our last item, sell points. Excuse me. I'm trying to do a video here. As I was saying, last but not least, sell points. I was oblivious to a lot of this. Price fluctuations not all sell points allow you to sell at their point but you maybe at some other point you can sell for a different part price fluctuation it was it was wild i knew nothing of it i really was just wandering around this game aimlessly running out of money buying stuff i didn't need spending money on stuff i didn't have to spend money on it just again absolutely wild so let's go ahead and tame it 
So one, we've already talked about paying attention to our price fluctuations. If the price for flour is down in the month of November, which I think we actually learned that it's actually its highest in November, so it's a pretty bad example now. But pay attention to when the price is at its lowest and when the price is at its highest. Don't sell your product. Excuse me. Rude. Don't sell your products when they're at their lowest price point. Make sure that you have a plan to sell them when they're at their highest price point so you make the most amount of money, get the most amount of uh, reward for the work that you've put in. Once you are ready to sell, though, browse the market page just like we've been doing. Who is buying for the most money? That's what you want to be looking for. If you have a specific product that you are looking to sell, we want to find who's buying that product for the most amount of money. I am by no means an expert in this game. I love playing it, and I've come a long way since I first started like playing Farming Simulator, and these were definitely a part of that progression. Now, sell points are not available for you to purchase. They are basically just a drop-off point as annotated by this emblem right here. Let's just say the, the diner right here. If they're buying, let's see, let's, fi let's find something that the diner is going to buy, right? Uh, the diner is most likely going to buy, uh, let's go down here. Maybe it's going to buy cheese. Let's, let's see if the diner is going to buy cheese. Of course it's not. Is it going to buy cereal? Nope. Honey? Nope. Uh, it's got to buy lettuce, right? Nope. How about tomatoes? Not looking good. Where, what is the diner going to buy? All right. So if we look here at the cake, fast food restaurant, look, if you get into productions to this level to where you are producing cake, you are winning $10,000 at the grocery store. 9800 at the fast food restaurant. Oh, and it gets better. I mean, right now, yeah, we're about at our high price, but look at this, eleven, nearly $11,000 for cake. Let's go back. Let's look at butter. Fast food restaurant. They need butter. They're buying 2600 bucks. Price fluctuations, $2,900. You're going to make almost three grand. Let's look at cheese. Fast food restaurant, $5,300, ladies and gentlemen. Price fluctuations, we're at about our highest point right now. Sell points are key. Now, in order to get cheese, in order to get cake, we have to buy the production points over time, which is why I say initially don't rush into productions because you have to have the input in order to maintain the output. If you have the output, take that output to another production and turn it, in, or turn it into an input in order to get closer to making cake in order to get closer to making cheese and then find these sell points that are buying for the most money. I guarantee you it will not be long before you're starting to make a lot of significant money gains, which is going to open up a lot of different stuff on the sales page. You're going to be able to afford a lot more stuff. Even if you just go straight to the farm shop, you're going to be able to afford a lot more stuff. I mean, large tractors start at like 240 and they work their way up from there. The stuff is not cheap. You see why now I say $1.5 million in this game is not a lot of money. You can buy one tractor, and that's going to consume a third of your bank account at that point. And these are the base costs of these tractors. Keep that in mind as well, too. So $329 for this tractor, that's for 396 horsepower. If you need more horsepower, that's going to be an extra $38,000 there, boss. That's $367,000 tractor right there. Oh, you like that Kloss right there? Yeah, that's only the 490 horsepower. It's another 27,000 to get 530 horsepower. That's $436,000 of your 1.5 mil if you started on Farm Manager. That's where I say you got to watch what you're spending your money on. Like I said before, I'm by no means an expert in this game. However, I absolutely love playing Farming Simulator 22. I'm not, I'm not paid by giant software or farming sim to say any of that type of stuff. I just genuinely love this game. I've come a long way since I first started. And how I got here was doing the exact same thing you guys are doing right now. I was watching a starter guide video for beginners on how to even get started, how to make things make sense. The game is so much fun and it can be played in so, so many different ways as I stated at the beginning of the video. You want to harvest a field, jump on Farming Sim 22, and there's a field to harvest. You want to do a role play series where you create this backstory about your farm and set those conditions. As I mentioned before, 
it's absolutely doable, and it's a very, very fun way to play the game. But you got to understand the basics first. And the basics start here with the five things that I wish I knew when I started playing Farming Simulator. I truly hope they help you get into this game and get you to enjoy it more. Maybe you'll uncover some things that you've been struggling with in this video. You'll hear it and you'll be like, oh my, that's it. That's the one thing I've been struggling with and this just cleared it up. That's why I wanted to sit down and do this video. It's the first of many to come for the beginner series. But for this video, that's going to be a wrap. I hope you all have enjoyed. Stay tuned for more of the tips and tricks types videos in the future. We haven't even talked about all the mods yet. And with that, we'll catch you in the next one. See you.